here. Thanks for coming and um, for deciding to choose this room and this presentation as this is the first presentation. We hope you enjoy it. This is called uh, Close Encounters Between Requirements and CCML. Yeah? My name is Mauricio Alferes and this is Patrick Tessier. Uh, we are working for the um, uh, Atomic Commission in France. So we are doing different kind of things, research, but we are also developing systems and uh, our main area of focus is small driven development. So this is one, only one of the many things that we are doing right now. So the class encounters between CCML and requirements a fancy name to what we are really going to present today is called Papyrus for Requirements. Yeah, so what is it? In reality, it's a set of Eclipse plugins for model driven requirements engineering. Um, they are based on the main Papyrus platform that you well know for modeling UML and CCML and many other real-time um, systems uh, problems. So what is CCML? Uh, this presentation is supposed to be intermediate level, but I will go through some basic concepts. Uh, so CCML is just for an extension and a specialization of UML, Unified Modeling Language, for system modeling. So one of the many diagrams that CCML is proposing is the requirement diagram. This is a cross-cutting diagram. Why is cross-cutting? Because you can link requirements to everything. Yeah, it is not an isolated diagram, but it is kind of the glue that will take everything together. Yeah, so it's very important. It's the heart of CCML. The concept of a requirement is not that complex. Yeah, so we will find a requirement is, uh, has an identifier, a text that will tell you which are the things that the system shall do, and a name. Yeah? But if we look into the details of our CCML requirement, you will find many more relationships. For example, from which requirement or to which requirement this requirement derives from, if the requirement is a copy or is uh, supposed to be copied, uh, if it is refined, for example, for a, by a use case or something like that, if it is uh, satisfied, yeah, maybe a block, a use case, a set of packages. Also, we have the relationship called trace to, that we can link a requirement to, let's say, a business problem, an objective, a vision of the enterprise. And also, we have the verify by, that is something that we are going to use to link a requirement to, for example, a use case or a test, test uh, scenario, yeah? So uh, as I told you, uh, the base of Papyrus for requirements is obviously Papyrus, UML. We can install it in the neon release of um, Papyrus. It's coming, but we also have one working version in our nightly view of the site. And we can also, uh, you can also install a CCML. The la latest version is 1.4. Everything is ready. And to install our tool, Papyrus, Papyrus for requirements, you can click on install Papyrus additional components in your Eclipse installation and just click here and everything will be installed uh, very nicely and fast. So um, we are covering all the areas that define requirements engineering in general. So we have specification, analysis, validation, and verification, and a transversal activity that is called management or traceability. Okay? So I will start by a specification. There is not a specific order of actions or processes that we have to accomplish. But we may say that people usually start by creating <coughs> some preferences on how the requirements look like, the types of requirements. And then there is a top-down decomposition of the requirements starting from business to concrete requirements. So from the business world to the systems world. So for supporting business modeling and requirements uh, from the business world, we are using a standard called BMM. This is, come, this is a standard proposed by the OMG. So uh, it is called business motivation model. So it captures business requirements justifying why we want to do something. This is the intent of our, of our system, our mission. What 
we aim to achieve, why, how we plan to do the, the things, how we plan to assess our accomplishment. So it is very important because with DMM, we can also link to different kind of paradigms. For example, process modeling, using business <coughs> processes, using BPMN, um, business rules. So this world is very wide and is not always treated when we are doing systems modeling. It's very important. So we are providing um, a nice editor for each one of the uh, aspects that we are defining in, in BMM. I will show you. This is one example of the model that we may create using BMM. So we have uh, strategies, and um, strategies may be accomplished by uh, tactics, and the tactics, in fact, are run or are performed by concrete processes. So we can go from a very high level of, of abstraction to very concrete actions in our <coughs> systems, even uh, automatically. So this is the BMM editor. We have a tree view, we have a form view, a diagram based view. And for system requirements, so we escape from the high level view and then we go to the system level, something more concrete. We are using CSML. This is a standard Papyrus CSML. So you can create requirements. This is the link between traditional textual um, ways to express requirements. This is just ad hoc on formatted text to really chunks of text that has a <coughs> meaning and they can be uh, related to each other. So this is CSML and we support the same kind of use than in BMM. We also support uh, tables to express uh, requirements, um, decompose requirements and describe all the features that a requirement has. These are only three of the many features <coughs> that a requirement may have. Um, the first thing that we did specifically for requirements is to create um, what we call um, Papyrus CML um, preferences. So it will tell you uh, which is the prefix of the requirement, uh, if you are going to decompose a requirement, how is the pattern to create a new requirement, and many useful things. Then we will see the, the part of traceability and management. So the first thing is how to connect with other tools. Yeah? So we created um, some interfaces to connect with simple comma separated values uh, um, files, Excel files, and RECIF files. RECIF means requirements internet in interchange format. So it is a common format that all the producers of requirements engineering tools are using now. We also support many kinds of tables. This is the table that will help us to go to link um, goals and things from the business world with, with only one click here, we will connect the requirements to the business <coughs> world. So it is important and we can do the same thing at the diagram level with trace relationships. I will go very fast just to tell you that you can also create different kinds of uh, metrics like derive from, refine by, satisfy by, verify by, so it's very easy. And also we have a generic uh, requirements table where we can select, I'm sorry for the resolution of this uh, uh, video bin, uh, we can also present all kind of a uh, relationship of a requirement and we can select. So it is very customizable. Also, uh, there are assistants that will help you according to each type of model element, how the model element can be linked to other things in your system. So each one of those are contextual assistants. For analysis and validation and verification, we have created something called um, metrics, and we are supported by a standard called a structure metrics meta model, SMM, it's a standard to share information about measurements. Yeah. So what we have here in, in the requirements world is um, only three measures, yeah? number of requirements, number of satisfied requirements or unsatisfied requirements, and we can also the same, do the same thing with verify and verify requirements. It is a basic set of measures that we can use for requirements, but the SMM <coughs> framework that we implemented for this is generic, so you can create your own metrics for your own projects. So it is made by default and <coughs> it is very useful and you can charge, you can compute uh, standard measures here 
or you can import yours and we'll show you it will show you in the metrics view also we are working on graphical <coughs> views to present our results everything is open source so you can customize it your way um, for verification and validation we have uh, extended the um, um, verification <coughs> framework in EMF, GMF. So the idea is that you select your model, you click on select constraints and validate model, and you will show, you will click on papyrus for requirements rules. We have two examples of, of rules, and it will show you the, the results in your model. So it will tell you the list of warnings, possible problems in your model, which requirements are not satisfied or validated by any, any other element. It will show some decorations in the model explorer and also in the table. So it is very useful to have quality, high quality requirements. Now, um, there are some other things that maybe are difficult to explain uh, just with the presentation, but that Patrick will take some time to do a short demo. Mm -hmm. So you will have a taste of what we are really accomplishing here. Patrick. Okay. <coughs> oh. Yeah, so maybe. So I will try to be efficient. <laughs> we start on late, so I think we can this shift a little bit of time. Okay. So uh, first, I will speak about import Rekif. So maybe you know. We have to change the. We have to show it. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Voilà. 